Hey everyone, it's Daniel Brother Barbaris. In this next video, we'll be setting up our deployment workbench. So let's get started. We're already logged into our MDT server. So let's go over here. We're going to click on Start and Deployment Workbench. We're going to click, then right click on Deployment Shares. Click New Deployment Share. We're going to change this to the D drive. Next. Deployment share is fine with dollar. Next. We're going to call this MDT Lab Deployment Share. Next. Leave that at default. Next. Next. And away we go. Then click Finish. And we're going to close Deployment Share. Okay. Now we're going to go down here to our terminal. We're going to click on PowerShell. We're going to create a few additional folders. We're going to create a Logs folder a recovery keys folder, a custom scripts folder, and then a user data folder. Okay, so let's copy from 25 up to 21. Paste that there, and there we go. Now we're going to go here, right click start, run, compmgmt.msc. Okay, and we're going to change the permissions on our share, okay? So we're going to go to Shared Folders, Shares, and we're going to see our Deployment Share dollar here. We're going to click and right-click on that. Properties. We're going to go to Share Permissions. Click Add. Type Everyone. Check Names. OK. We'll remove Administrators. And we're going to go to the Security tab. We're going to do the same thing. Click Edit, Add, Everyone. Check Names. OK, full control, remove administrators and remove system, click apply, OK, OK, and close computer management. Now we're just going to verify that all is well, so click File Explorer, go to your D drive, and open deployment share, and if you don't have a prompt, we're good. Close the Explorer window. All right, let's reopen our deployment workbench. So start, deployment workbench. We're going to expand. Then we're going to our deployment share, our MDT lab deployment share. We're going to click, then right click on operating systems. Okay, and We're going to create a few folders here. And here they are. So first things first, Windows 10. Next, next, and good to go. We'll do the same thing for Windows 11 and Windows Server 2022. There we are. And then you can see we put subfolders here. So underneath Windows 10, new folder, 22H2. Windows 11, new folder. 23H2 and server 2022 new folder 21H2 there we go okay now in the out of the box drivers we're going to create a winpe folder so click right click new folder winpe there we are We'll go click on WinPE, new folder, Dell Inc. Dot, uh, and a period. Next, next. And I'm basing this on a WMIT command, and I'll show you that one later. WinPE, new folder, HP. And one more, new folder, Lenovo. All right. And now, Underneath the eight Dell Inc., we'll click, right-click, new folder, A02. Right-click again, new folder, A33. There we are. Click and right-click HP, new folder, 2.70. And for our buddy Ahmed, right-click, new folder, ThinkPad T2. 
T460S. Next, next, and we're good there. Now we're going to create some more high-level folders, and these are just going to be for examples. Let's say that I'm deploying to a HBZ8G4 workstation, a Latitude 7640, or a ThinkPad T4640. So we're going to, or T460, okay? So let's go. We've already created our WinPE, so click on out of box drivers, new HP. This is on the same level, okay? New folder, Dell Inc. period. There we are. And one more, Lenovo. Okay. Now underneath each of these, I'm gonna type new folder, Windows 10. And new folder, Windows 11. Okay, now that I've got those, I can highlight these, right click, copy, and I'm gonna paste those under Dell, paste. There we go. And under Lenovo, I'm gonna paste those as well. All right, we're good to go there. So let's go up here. We're gonna create a HP Z4, or Z8G4 workstation. So new folder. I'm going to paste that next, next. I'm going to do that for both Windows 10 and Windows 11. Okay. You can see Latitude 7640. Click, right click, new folder. There we go. Same thing here, new folder. Okay. Now, as I've said previously, the ThinkPad doesn't support Windows 11, but any other models you want to put under there, you can do that. So I'm going to go here to Windows 10, new folder, and paste. There we go. Okay, there we are. Now, we're going to click expand or advanced configuration, selection profiles, click, then right click, new selection profile, and I'm going to call this Drivers dash win PE. Next, we're going to expand out of the box drivers. And what you're going to do is expand win PE and select your manufacturer or manufacturer as you can select all three or one, whatever you'd like to do. I'm deploying HP machines, so I'm just going to click here. Next and next. Then finish. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click, then right click on our deployment share, click properties. We're only just deploying 64 bits, so uncheck x86, click on rules, click on edit bootstrap I and I. We're going to copy from 139 up to 130. And all we're doing here is we're setting our deploy root, which is MDT01 deployment share, dollar. We're going to skip the welcome screen. We're going to set our user ID to our task sequence service uh, account, place the password, and then our domain. So copy that, paste there, file, save, and you can close Notepad. Okay. Now under the rules, I'm going to go through all these with you. So I'm going to highlight first all the way down to line 257. Copy. And I'm going to highlight here, and I'm going to control V to paste and then I'm going to go through some of these lines with you okay so remember we did rules per task sequence so under priority I'm going to put task sequence ID before I do the default okay now our win 10 pro x64 task sequence we're going to call our task sequences these certain names okay and as you can see for each one I put a product key so for pro I'm going to tell it where I want to place it in my OUs in Active Directory. The what when I do my uh, BitLocker install, do I want to use a TPM module or do I want to use a TPM and a pin? So I placed comments here. You can remove if you want to use 
a pin when you start up the machine. You can do that as well. So you can just place a comment here, which is a semicolon, and you can remove these two, okay? But for right now, I'm just going to do TPM, so place a semicolon on both of these lines again, okay? So, so when 10 Pro 64, when 11 Pro 64, Windows 10 Entertainment, or I'm sorry, Enterprise, and Windows 11 Enterprise, we can deploy either of these through our task sequence just by changing the product, product key, okay? Then I'm going to set a Windows Server 2022 standard and place that in the member servers OU with the TPM module. And then a server data center version, if we want to deploy one of those, same thing, places that in the member servers OU, okay? The default is OS install yes. It's a new computer. We're not gonna create an extra partition on that drive. The organization name, I'm just typing MDT lab. You can replace that with whatever you want. Task sequence name will be something like Windows 10 Enterprise 64-bit 22H2. And I'm just gonna grab it from when we create our task sequences. Skip task sequence, no. Skip computer name, no. That way we can name each of our machines before they go out. Skip domain membership, yes. We're gonna join it to our MDT lab. We're gonna skip the product key because we've already placed the KME, KMS keys up top. Locale selection, yes. UI language, you can change that. You can ch change your UI, user locale, your keyboard locale. I'm gonna skip the time zone because I'm gonna put time zone name here. Now, if you don't know what your time zone name is, tzutil slash g. So right click on your machine, tzutil slash g, and it will tell you exactly what your time zone is. And you can place that here in plain text, okay? Skip roles, yes. Skip applications, no, because we're gonna create applications that we can select. We're going to tell it where our WSS server is. Since we set up WSS on our MDT server, we're using that. And remember, our port is 8530. Skip admin password. We're placing the admin password. Skip capture, yes. Do capture, no. We're going to skip computer backup because we're not backing up machines. We're just deploying. We're skipping user data. Our user data would be stored in a network location if we were doing user state migration. And where, what directory name? We're just going to give it the OSD computer name, okay? Skip BitLocker, yes. BitLocker allow alphanumeric pin is yes. So we can change that pin to alphanumeric instead of just numbers. TPM owner password, we put that there. The install suppress, no. Wait for encryption is true. And of course, OSD, wait for encryption is true. The BitLocker drive size is 3000. It's on the S drive. We're gonna record our recovery key in Active Directory as I showed you in previous video. Our, our key location will also store a text file in that recovery keys folder that we created, just in case you need one of those. Sometimes your uh, ISOs or IA people will want a copy of that recovery key to store in a locked uh, box or, or a Mosler. So um, then SL share, we're gonna put that the logs file, okay? Now this is a little trick to set the resolution to the recommended when it uh, starts. We just set the X resolution and Y resolution to one the vertical refresh to 60 and a bits per pixel to 32. When it gets to that, it's gonna say, hey, I can't do a one by one resolution. So I'm only gonna set it to a recommended resolution and that's what it does, okay. We're gonna skip the summary. We're gonna hide our shell during our deployment so nobody can interrupt it. We're gonna skip the final summary. And when it's done, we're gonna reboot the machine. Now the event service, you can see the port here. That's for our monitoring. See the event port here? And we're gonna click 
Enable monitoring for this deployment share. Apply. And there we are. Okay. Now, we're going to set all of this here in a, in a few moments, but I'll show you that. All right. So, rules. We've gone through that. Now we're going to go to the Windows PE. We're going to click on Platform, X64, Scratch Space, 512. Okay, under the Features tab, I'm going to do DISM Commandlets, .NET Framework, and Windows PowerShell. And what this does is it adds those features to our boot WIM when we boot up in WinPE. Okay, now for drivers and patches, we're going to click on the selection profile, and that selection profile we created, drivers when PE, click, click include all drivers from that selection profile. Now we've already enabled our monitoring, so we're good there. Click apply, and OK. All right, now we're going to import our drivers. So let's go to our out of the box here. We're going to go to WinPE. We're going to go HP first here. 2.70, right click, import drivers. We're gonna highlight this folder name, unless you have a newer one, as you're watching this video, maybe in the future, you can change that. Next, next, and away we go. And you can see, any of these warnings you can ignore, it usually just means that driver doesn't support, say, ARM64 or x86, we're not really worried about the warnings. As long as there's no red, you're good to go. Okay, I'm gonna let that go and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, and we're back and now we can click finish. There we are. And now we're gonna do the Windows 11 drivers for the Dell. So WinPE, which is A02, right click, import drivers. We'll highlight here. 287, paste, next, next, and that is a cab file. So what it does is it says expanding the cab file to see if there are any drivers in it, and it imports them. So I'll be back when that's done. Okay, and we're back, and that one's good. Finish. All right, and now we're going to do the A33. So let's copy this line, 293, go to A33 import drivers, paste that line, next, next, and same thing. We'll wait until that's started. It's expanding the cab file. And those are the Windows 10 drivers, which is a little bit larger than the, I think it was 24 megabytes for the other one and 100 and something megabytes. So this one will take a minute. So I'll be back in a few. Okay, and we're back and A33 is done. There we go. And now our Lenovo drivers. So we'll click here, right click, import drivers. We're gonna highlight our folder. Next, paste, next, next. And this should be very quick because like I said, Lenovo only loaded the drivers that you need, which are our um, storage and ethernet adapters. Very, very quick, very nice, I like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our terminal, go to PowerShell. We're going to create three folders for our operating systems. So copy from 305 down to 310 and paste. There we go. And we can close deployment workbench. And I will see you in the next video.